Welcome to watch the quick start guide video of WFEN series engine test bench. Software installation. Insert the USB flash drive into the computer. Open the USB flash drive file and open the Met E6 software installation package. The file contains three program files, Met E6 software program, software running framework driver, and serial port driver. Click Met E6 to run the installation program, then follow the prompts to install. After the installation is completed, shortcuts named Met E6 and Dot Analyzer will be created on the desktop. Right click, click Properties. Click Compatibility. Check Run this program as the administrator in the compatibility window settings. Click Apply and finally click Confirm. Click to install the serial port driver software in the U-Disk and follow the prompts to complete the installation. Click to install the software running framework software and follow the prompts to complete the installation. After the installation is completed, the MET software can connect to the bench to realize the data processing and handling. Users can adjust the screen resolution and screen display ratio according to their own usage habits. Engine installation and commissioning. The installer lifts the engine to the vicinity of the engine mount and adjusts the engine position so that the engine mount holes are aligned with the test bench mounting stud holes. It is recommended to use a dedicated lifting tool for testing engines with heavier weight. Use matching bolts to tighten the connection. Note, if the engine is subjected to endurance test, continuous working time exceeds 6 hours. Cumulative working time exceeds 30 hours. Medium low strength thread glue should be applied to the fastening bolts to prevent the bolts from loosening. The propeller installation should keep the heading on the propeller consistent with the heading of the aircraft. Use matching mounting bolts and propeller pads for assembly. Tighten the bolts in sequence. Note, when tightening the bolts, tighten them in stages in diagonal and clockwise directions. The mechanical connection between the engine and the test bench is assembled. Engine electrical control assembly and connection. Installation of the engine throttle servo drive or steering gear. Remove the bolts of the tie rod at the end of the servo rocker arm. Install the servo rocker arm on the servo after the servo travel is calibrated. It does not need to be installed before calibration. Since there is a risk that the initial position of the servo is not in the throttle range after the servo is powered on, be sure to remove the tie rod bolts of servo rocker arm end. Connect the servo plug, which is an 8B connector. Connect the temperature and speed signal plugs. The temperature and speed acquisition plug is a 10B connector, including two cylinder temperature signals and one speed signal. Ignition, flame off control circuit connection. The ignition, flame off control circuit has been connected inside the control box through the ground wire of the power supply circuit, and no other circuit connection configuration is required. Starter motor circuit installation. Connect the positive pole of the power cord to the positive terminal of the starter motor. Connect the negative pole of the power cord to the negative terminal of the starter motor. Secure the starter motor power cord with a rolling belt. Generator rectifier installation. 
Place the rectifier on the top mounting plate of the test bench. Connect the generator power connector to the rectifier. Connect the rectifier output connector to the load meter. Place the load on one side of the test bench to facilitate test personnel to view data. Use straps to secure the rectifier. Engine fuel circuit connection. Connect one end of the engine fuel inlet pipe to the outlet of the fuel flow sensor. Install the other end at the engine fuel inlet. Engine installation and electrical and fuel circuit connections completed. Bench power on and software connection. Connect the power line under the power control box. Turn on the UPS power and the master switch respectively. Press the power button on the collection box and hear three beep, beep, beep sounds, indicating that the equipment is powered on successfully. The wireless data transmission device module has been connected to the device. Connect the wireless data transmission computer module to the computer USB port. Open the MET software and enter the main interface. After the software automatically connects, it will make a beep sound, indicating that the connection is successful. Throttle travel calibration. Push the throttle lever to the fully closed state, that is, the minimum throttle position. In the software relay control window, click the motor servo power switch to power the servo. Click Allow Fire Up and drag throttle 1. Until the servo rocker arm is aligned with the mounting hole of the lever. At this time, the PWM value corresponding to throttle 1 displayed in the software is 1390 microseconds. That is, the minimum throttle opening value. Click Forbid Fire Up. Click System Settings. Enter the throttle curve setting interface. Set the minimum value of throttle 1 to 1390 microseconds. Click save parameters, and after saving successfully, the servo keeps the throttle closed. Connect and tighten the servo rocker arm and throttle lever. Click on the main interface of the software, click Allow Fire Up, and slowly drag the throttle. The servo slowly changes with the throttle until the throttle is in the full open state, that is, the maximum throttle position. In the software, record the PWM value corresponding to this throttle 1 as 1620 microseconds. That is, the maximum throttle opening value. Click Forbid Fire Up. Click System Settings. Enter the Throttle Curve Setting Interface. Set the maximum value of throttle 1 to 1620 microseconds. And click Save Parameters. Throttle Travel Calibration Completed. Sensor Calibration and Debugging. Optical Speed Sensor Calibration. Paste the reflective sticker to the position where the optical sensor beam is focused on the propeller, usually the root of the propeller or the middle of the propeller, and ensure that the beam always falls on the reflective sticker when it touches the propeller. The distance between the optical sensor focusing lens and the reflective sticker is 3 to 5 cm. Enter the software configuration system setting interface 
Fill in the number of optical stickers in the number of blades column. Reflective stickers are pasted on each blade. And click set. Move the optical sensor beam away from the propeller and aim it at the non-sensing surface, air. Open the sensor debugging cover and press the set button. Set is displayed on the sensor. Move the optical sensor beam to the reflective sticker on the propeller. Press the set button again to complete the setting. Optical sensor calibration is completed. Temperature sensor assembly. A total of eight temperature sensors can be configured for cylinder temperatures and for exhaust temperatures, respectively configured to the engine's left front, left rear, right front and right rear cylinder positions. Among them, for our cylinder temperatures, T1 and T2 are the engine's direct output of the left front and left rear cylinder temperatures, and T3 and T4 are two-way cylinder temperature sensors. Connect T3 and T4 cylinder temperature sensors to the right front and right rear cylinder bodies respectively. Connect T5, T6, T7, and T8 exhaust temperature sensors to the left front, left rear, right front, and right rear exhaust pipes respectively, and fix them. The temperature sensor is installed, and the wiring harness is fixed with a rolling belt. The temperature sensor assembly is completed. Engine test preparation and testing. Fuel tank layout and connection. Place the fuel tank at the side and rear of the test bench. Connect the liquid level sensor to the test bench. Connect the fuel tank outlet pipe to the fuel flow sensor input. Fan installation layout. Note, when testing engine thrust, a fan needs to be installed to dissipate heat from the engine cylinder to prevent the cylinder temperature from being too high. The fan is arranged behind the test bench. First, assemble and tighten the two-way exhaust pipes to the fan outlet. Align the outlets of the two-way exhaust pipes to the engine cylinder and assemble them on the pipe bracket. Protective cage installation. Lift the protective cage. Align the protective cage with the hinge mounting holes on the test bench and insert. Use hand screws to secure the protective cage. Test bench installation requirements. The test bench needs to be placed in an open area and fixed horizontally. When testing engines with greater pulling force, it is necessary to use a clamp or a weight to fix the bench. Preparation before starting the engine. Note, before testing the engine, make sure that no one is near the test area, especially the propeller area. Open the fuel tank cap and pour the fuel with a mixture ratio of 150 into the tank. Turn on the switch at the tank outlet. Engine fuel absorption. Click the servo power switch in the relay control window. Click allow fire up, switch the button to forbid fire up, and switch the test bench to the ignition state. At this time, the electric start and ignition buttons in the relay control window are switched from an inoperable state to an operable state. Adjust the throttle value of throttle from 1 to 50%. Click the electric start when the ECU is powered and the ignition is turned off. Observe whether the starter motor can drive the engine to rotate normally, and check whether there is fuel inhalation in the transparent fuel pipe. Note, 
New engines or engines that have not been used recently require multiple starting attempts until the carburetor's built-in diaphragm pump can pump enough fuel. To ensure that the starting motor is well cooled during multiple starts, the starting motor should not work for more than 8 seconds each time, and the starting interval should be no less than 2 to 3 minutes. Check and calibrate the fuel flow sensor. After the engine has finished absorbing fuel, there is static fuel in the fuel flow sensor and make sure there are no bubbles in the fuel circuit. Observe the reading on the sensor display. When the reading exceeds the range of plus or minus one, the fuel flow sensor needs to be calibrated. Open the control panel, press the up and down buttons at the same time, and the lower display will display calibrate or not. Select yes and press the mode button to complete the calibration. Note, after calibration, if the reading exceeds plus or minus one, there may be bubbles in the sensor. You can ignite the engine and then turn it off for calibration. Test engine. Before testing, power on the fan and start it. In the control window, click thrust and torque reset, fuel consumption reset, one button reset, click allow fire up and adjust the throttle to 15%. In the relay control window, turn on the ECU power supply and ignition one, and the button changes from red to green. Click record. Click the electric start button to start the engine, and after the engine starts, release the start button. After the engine runs smoothly, the engine speed can be controlled by increasing or decreasing the throttle. The engine is started, and users can test according to test requirements. Test over, stop and turn off the bench. Terminate the test, slowly adjust the throttle to the idle position, that is, the throttle gradually decreases to 0%. Click Forbid Fire Up, you can see the relay control window, the ignition switches to the red off state, the engine is turned off, the data is automatically saved and the recording stops. Note, if the engine is tested for a long time at high power, it is necessary to reduce the throttle to a low speed state and run for a few minutes, and then turn off the ignition switch after the engine cools down. After the engine is turned off, if there is no other test content, turn off the fan. Turn off the switch at the fuel tank outlet, off. Turn off the power supply of the acquisition box. Turn off the main power supply of the control box, and finally turn off the UPS power supply. Note, please turn off the UPS power supply after the test to prevent the built-in power supply from running out of power. Test completed. The teaching of the usage of our WFEN 17 Max series has been completed. Thank you for watching.